Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome back to another video. This video is all about React Native, not the existing one, the existing React Native, but all the things which are about to come in the React Native. There are some amazing things which I'm quite excited about in the React Native world. And this is my personal prediction that now the React Native apps are not only going to support 60 FPS, but even higher than that. So cool. Let me walk you through that what all is about to come in the React Native in 2022. Now, I assume that a lot of you know about what's happening in the React Native or how things existingly happen in React Native world. But if you don't know, here's a quick summary and a quick revision for that. So yes, I have made a small presentation for that as well. So in the current version of the React Native, there are three major things or three major thread that are responsible for doing majority of the task. The first one being the JS bundle or the JS bundle thread, which is responsible for all the code that you write in React Native. It just makes a thread for it for its execution, kind of that. And there is another one thread which is responsible for the native UI. So there is a mechanism, I'll discuss that in a second, but this native UI thread is responsible for uh, making all those interactions when you tap on a button, the click and the scrolling. So this is responsible for all the native features. I'll explain that in a minute, so don't you worry on that. Now the third one is known as shadow or also known as shadow tree or the shadow thread. This is responsible for calculating all the positions and what's the height and width of the elements and then transform it into the native elements like for example UI view into the iOS app uh, or something similar into the Android app. So these are the three things which existingly happens in the React Native. This is how the architecture currently is working. And there's a lot of architectural change that is coming up into the React Native world. Let me walk you through with that. So currently what happens is we have a JS bundle in which we write all of our JS code. And this all code needs to interact with the native UI so that you can see the buttons or the scroll features or the tap or anything that happens with that. But right now, JS bundle doesn't interact directly with the native UI. It, it cannot do that. So there is something known as bridge, which is quite popular in the React Native world. And through this bridge, everything happens. Now, this is not bad, but there are certain issues with this bridge itself. First and foremost, all the data that you write in the JS bundle moves into this bridge and then this bridge actually takes this and pass it on onto the native UI. Now this is not bad, but the problem is that everything is serialized into JSON. So this bridge takes everything from the JS bundle that is being converted on the fly into the JSON and then is deserialized back into the native UI when at the time of passing into the native UI. So again, as you see that this is already very problematic. The time that is being consumed in serialization and deserialization of JSON is pretty time consuming. Okay, now that's not it. There is a little bit more of a strange thing which is there into this bridge. Uh, we'll come back onto this one as well in a minute. But first, let me tell you what updates are coming in. Now what's happening is the React Native team is now introducing a JSI, something known as JavaScript interface. Now the beauty about this interface is that it's written in C++. Also, now there is no need of serialization. You don't have to do any of serialization. So already you can see and imagine that how fast it is going to be since there is no conversion into JSON, back and forth and all of that. So that is really one of the first and foremost beautification of this thing. JSI is entirely written into C++. So I hope you can imagine where we are going with this one. The first and foremost, it has decoupled this JSI from the existing JavaScript core engine, which is currently working in React Native. Now, since it is written in C++ and it is kind of a general purpose, that means you can introduce more engines as well. You are already familiar with the power of V8 engine, which we are using throughout everywhere in the node environment. There is Chakra and there are a couple of engines of the JavaScript that are now going to be open to be able to inject up here. Now, not only this, this JSI, since everything is written in C++, I hope where the things are going into the React Native world, eventually they are going to be able to support more devices. Maybe just like Flutter has rolled out an update that you can make Windows app as well. Since JSI is in C++, maybe Windows API are going to be available to us directly, and maybe we can make those apps as well. And of course, first and foremost, the devices like watches and TVs and all of them, since it's C++, the power of C++ is insane and that is going to be available to you 
directly via JavaScript there. So it's really an awesome thing. And also now since this entire thing is written in C++, there is no such thing. Uh, there is another thing which you should know about, which is known as synchronous and asynchronous. Now in the existing React Native app, everything is asynchronous. And most of the programmers, especially in the initial phase, believes that everything asynchronous is the best thing and synchronous is the worst thing. No, it's not quite like that. There is a middle ground as well that do asynchronous thing, but sometimes you have to prioritize certain things so that you can you can actually do things better way. In case you are a seasoned uh, React Native developer, you already know that whenever we use Flatlist, we have to be extra cautious because there are so many things that happens bad in that. And this brings us to the topic which React Native team is working on to the next, which is known as Fabric. Now, in the existing React Native apps, all the rendering and all the positioning is happening via the threads. Uh, remember the thread I talked about, the shadow thread? Yeah, that's responsible for doing all of that. So now they are taking a new approach in rendering the UI element, and that is all possible because of the JSI. Let me give you a more example on that. Right now, whenever you write any JavaScript code, you simply write onto the web, let uh, document dot get element by ID and you just pass on an ID in that. So you're holding a reference of the DOM element into the JavaScript. It was never meant to do that, but since JavaScript has the ability to do it, we can actually take advantage of this. We're going to use the similar advantage into the native apps as well. Now, because we are having the C++ references, we are going to hold these references directly into the React Native. So similar to get element by ID, something like, uh, hey, get Bluetooth by ID or something is definitely not out of the table. But coming back onto the fabric. Now React Native team is having a new approach of how to render the UI element. This is really fantastic. Now remember I talked about the shadow thread. The shadow thread is responsible to calculate all layout dimensions and position. Now, once it has done that, it generates a host view tree. Now, this is nothing much. It's just kind of a interpretation that, hey, whatever you are saying, I need to do a native element rendering for that in Android and in iOS, whatever they are. Now, since in the existing React Native app, this is all happening asynchronously, we welcome the frame drops, especially in the flat list. So whenever you scroll through the flat list, we have seen that there is a performance issue which happens, and we are quite cautious about that. Now we don't need to be cautious because React Native is now choosing a middle ground that yes, still everything will happen asynchronously, but we are going to prioritize some of the tasks. For example, the tap, the scrolling gesture, and a couple of more as well. They are going to take priority and thus, we are going to take full advantage of uh, all the frame per second that we are having, the FPS in the device itself. So whether the device is having 60 FPS or maybe higher, since we have exposure to the C++ native elements, we can actually take full advantage of it. If this is all impressing you, there is one more thing that is happening awesomely in the React Native. Now this thing especially is hidden to most of the starting or the initial phase developers uh, known as Turbo. Now what happens in the existing React Native apps is since uh, everything is not directly connected to you, like you don't get a reference via C++ or any other uh, language that you can take advantage of Bluetooth or you can take a, geo a GPS location and all these things. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using those elements or not. This React Native app has to invoke all these elements so that in case your app take advantage of these elements, they can call them. So all of these GPS data, your Bluetooth data, your sound drivers, camera, everything get invokes with your application start. Obviously, this makes your app a bit slower. Uh, and again, in case you are not using any of them, that's just bloating of the app. That doesn't make any sense. And since now we have JSI, the JavaScript interface, that this bloating is not needed. And that is called as turbo feature that you can hold a reference of Bluetooth directly so you can call them anytime. There is no need to invocation of these elements right out of the box. So yes, I'm all excited about these updates, but there are a little bit concerns from my end. Although these concerns are already addressed in the React Native community and by the team as well. The biggest of the concern is that if the, the module is being written, the GSI is written entirely in C++ and JavaScript is, you know that, it's dynamically typed language. We don't have previously known that what type of element is coming up. So either this React Native ecosystem is going to jump more into the TypeScript environment uh, that you need to define your types and everything in advance so that we don't face any issues or there is also a lot of talk going on about the code gen. That means their own built-in checker for these types so that you don't have to use TypeScript. You can write your regular JavaScript, but just like TypeScript forces you to define all these types and everything, 
the inbuilt code gen from the react native team is going to force you to do that and will check all the things in advance so again there is a lot of if and but in that case but these these existing updates are already very fantastic and i am very much exciting as excited about this because we have a lot of apps that we are already using react native throughout through them and this is a remarkable update i hope this overview was fully understandable to you and in case you have enjoyed this video make sure you hit that subscribe button Join me up. I throw up a lot of such tech videos and tutorials and crash courses and full-fledged courses too. So hit that subscribe button and let's catch up in the next video.